Hey, you alright, son? How are you? You good? I'm good, cheers. I, yeah. Nice. Oh, nice. I like. I love the set dressing here. You got well, your you trainers. Know. You got your t-shirt. Yeah. It's all good. good. Cheers to you. Have you got your pint? You got a beer? Yeah, I have. Hold on. Yeah, let's crack this open. All right. What beer are you drinking? I'm not telling you. I've not got a beer sponsor yet. I don't know what's wrong with these people out there. <laughs> It's got two pints of one, and Ralph surely is destined for a beer sponsor, so I'm not going to mention what beer I'm drinking. You know, I'm I love you're, angle. Hiding it. you're even hiding the can with your hand so that they don't. <laughs> you're so cheap. Bollocks. Oh, you're like holding the name to ransom until you get a sponsor. I love it. Mate, I tell Cheers. you what, we'll big them up as well when we get a sponsor. Cheers, mate. All the best, everyone out there. <laughs> nice one. Here's to you lot. Cheers, uh, and this is to say um, thanks uh, for the response. Uh, for yep. episode one, uh, went down really well. So thank you. We had a bit of a, a Wi Fi issue um, with because um, I now I'm wait, 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 wait. What do you mean we had a bit of a Wi Fi issue? Well, well, I, yeah, I, I have a Wi Fi. <laughs> I do. <laughs> it's a, don't drag me down with you. I live in the 21st century. No, I know, man. I'm still analog. I'm shite with stuff like that. The Wi-Fi drives me crackers. I don't get it. Um, and I've tried to get it because I'm doing it down in this bit now in, in my lodge. Ralph. Stop saying oh, it's a shed. It's a shed <laughs> with a bedroom. It's not a lodge. It's a well, shed room. Because I'm, do, I'm doing it down here now. <laughs> In the shed room, The Wi-Fi yes. is a bit shite, so we've upgraded it. And anyway, listen, we won't have that problem are you, again. I uh, just want to let you know. Net? Oh, bollocks. Still super net? Well, I can't get out of it. It cost me 500 quid to get out of it, so I'm still with him, but I'm just going to slag him I off am. every month. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to keep slag. I'm just going to just keep that. telling people not to be with him. Stop promoting them. Stop you, talking about them. They're shite. You won't mention. You won't mention what beer you're drinking because they won't sponsor you. But you will mention Supernet. And to you brought it up because you're paying them. <laughs> you brought it up. I love it. No, um, but yeah. Uh, so anyway, yeah. So the um, my Wi-Fi is all sorted now. We're using different technology. So me being glitchy in that first episode, even though you all seem to be all right about it, it won't happen again. No, but thank you for your response. response. To our first episode, wasn't it? Yeah, series two, episode one. It's it's. it's I got to say to anyone listening who bothered to, you know, let us know that they were enjoying it. Um, every time we do this, you, you never know. You never know. It's basically just me and Will just just chatting shit. So we we never quite know how interested people are going to be in it. So every single every single time one of you says that you like it, it really makes a massive difference. So thank you. Yeah, and and also what really is really important um, is. People seem, you know, we, we sort of do this so we can have a bit of fun. I get to see my mate and we talk about things that's going on. We have a bit of a rant about stuff. And, and I think people out there are going through similar situations where we're mm. locked down and, you know, frustrated and stuff. So hopefully we're talking about things that you like, time. have a bit of laugh about it. And it it, um, it, it just takes your mind off the situation yeah. of how things are going at the yeah. moment. So listen, thanks what for all your responses. Really appreciate it. Thank you. While we're doing thanks, we should also mention we've got to thank our sponsors, Manscaped, for doing uh, the first five ep episodes of this season. Yes. Um, <laughs> well, I don't know why they're not doing the rest of the episode. Give us a second series, you shit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they're just seeing yeah. how we go for five. They might have been a one off last <laughs> yeah. season. If we're, if we're rubbish, they're going to jib they've, us very quickly. They've peaked after um, season one. Yeah, exactly. But um, yeah, they uh, we, we were thinking about Manscaped and, and uh, you know what they do. and valentine's day is just around the corner so now's a good i guess a good time to talk about it what you you were suggesting will that maybe what? we should ask people to trim up their 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 bits and um and send you a load of photos weren't you i don't think i was a load of i don't dudes. think I was. <laughs> definitely not the blokes i'll tell you that for free <laughs> i don't need to be seeing that put me off my cornflakes in the morning no bollocks <laughs> No, what I was saying, no, no bollocks. I didn't mean bollocks, I meant bollocks to it. No, don't send me your bollocks. No. Listen, the thing about Manscaped, yes, Valentine's Day's around the corner. And I was saying, obviously it's for men, genuinely, but if you want to use it on your female partner and have a bit of fun, making a little love art to whatever you want, I could judge it. I could do a little competition in judging the best designed VJ. That's all I'm saying. All right, so, all right. well, I'm going to suggest to people... Try, try and see if you can make some sort of elephant uh, for the guys. Make some sort <laughs> of elephant with the, little tr with the little trunk. And then send, and then uh, tweet, tweet Will. Tweet them to Will so that he can judge them. <laughs> no, let's please not say that. we did. Let's not say we did. Please, Bollocks please that. do that, everybody. No, no we, we did chuff um, Manscaped on board. And it is Valentine's Day. So get it, men. It's a great kit. Have you used yours yet, Ralph? Hey, mate, I'm, I'm on the old ball deodorant on, on the regs. <laughs> 
<laughs> hey, I can't walk into a shop without people going, oh, is that sandalwood? <laughs> <laughs> the problem is when you run out your missus is going to know she's going to go what's that cheese and onion smell can I smell meat potato pies <laughs> oh no oh you've oh. run out your bald deodorant oh. that's what it is <laughs> oh dear me bald you know, deodorant bald message. deodorant that works seriously seriously man I got a message about the first one it made me laugh and they said do you know what we're saying what we, you can recommend people your friends uh, we could do a little competition a giveaway by Manscaped we've got our two pints cold that Ralph will tell you about in a minute but they get you 20% off but they, we're sending, sending you messages you know of anyone who if you can recommend somebody who will need a good trim up down there and he, and he said my missus should recommend me because she's sick of getting hairy teeth Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> he's sending me, he's sending me the tweet. Mm. You don't, you don't want to get that tweeted at you, do you? <laughs> oh. My missus says I look like Slash and I'm bald on my head. That's not what you want. It <laughs> <laughs> looks, like, looks like I've got Leo Sayer in a neck lock. Not that, no, no. <laughs> Oh dear. Right, so uh, if anybody can uh, do like some inventive like trimming and make it look like an elephant, please tweet Will the pictures and he can No! Piss um, off with his and, <laughs> and you can get you can get twenty percent off Manscaped products um for val- great Valentine's Day present for your for your fellas um or friends. Um you can get twenty uh, percent off with our code, a promotional code, which is two pints spelled out in capitals, T W O P I N T S at manscaped.com. Yeah. So yeah, get involved. Get involved. And today yeah. we've got a guest. We we've got cool. our first guest of season two. Are you going to ask him about to stay with the theme? I dare you to ask him about whether he's trimmed up. You, you <laughs> ask him. Wait, no, he might I'm just go out and turn it off. He might just go. Well, gonna, I didn't I'm think it was that kind of podcast. Off I go. <laughs> yeah, he'll be like that. See you, lads. Yeah. No, I guess today that's too much. Yeah, I guess today me and Ralph met um, a long time ago when we started Two Pints, and we're going to talk about that. Um, and yeah, uh, it's Jason Manford, so um, yeah. I'm so chuffed to get him on. He's a great bloke. I've not seen him for years. I know, Ralph, you've recently worked with him. Yeah, well, the funny thing is, we'll, we'll talk to him about it, but me and Jason have crossed paths a few times over the years um, at various you know, various different things, all types of things, whether it's auditions or do's or we play football together. And most recently, he was a guest um, on an episode of Death in Paradise, this season's Death in Paradise. So, so you know, I've seen him quite a bit, but I, you haven't seen him since since the Two Pints days, have you? So, what, like, near no, enough... No, no, no. Near enough no. 15 years. No, obviously, I've seen him. I've seen how well he's done. He's just... Oh, I mean, he's, he's a superstar. Over. Of course he is, but, um, yeah. All right, no, well, um, no. great. Well, we'll Let's we'll, get him on, shall we? Let's, let's get him on and, and have a chat to him. It'd be really good to catch up. I think he's waiting. Let's get Jason on. Come on, Jace. First guest of season two. Hi, Jason Bamford's here, people. Hey, there he is. There he is. And um, we're having a bit have of a Have you got a beer? Today. Oh, yeah. Have you got a beer? I've not, I've not got a beer. I've got a massive bottle of water. <laughs> oh, right, Show me right. that again. Show me that again. <laughs> Look at that. What, that what is it? Right, on, I honestly thought like it was a coconut. It was a hollowed out coconut <laughs> with a bottle inside. I was like, you've, yeah, you did one no. episode of Death in Paradise. You're taking it too, too I'm serious. I'm for it. <laughs> yeah. no, I, but I'm but, trying to get through my two litres a day, so I've got an actual bottle. Oh yeah, that's two liters, but it takes about forty minutes to fill up. Are you on a bit of a fitness kick? Because when when he was over on the, in Death of Paradise, Will he he, had, he he never went anywhere without protein bars. He had protein bars all over the gaff. It's like, <laughs> and they went up, they went up, uh, they walked up the volcano for the morning. And he was yeah. like, he said, well, "What happened? Didn't they, wasn't everyone laughing at you for bringing them?" They were all they were all laughing before we went, Ralph. <laughs> <laughs> but I tell you, two and a half hours up a volcano, suddenly somebody wants a bloody protein bar. <laughs> he couldn't. That's uh, why yeah. it's the dad skill. It's your dad skills. You're always looking ahead at what could go wrong. Yeah. Well, you are both so, dads, yeah. aren't you? How many How many kids have you got, Chase? Ralph, I have six children. Six children. I was, I was waiting, I just went quiet. To, I was waiting to see to <laughs> see Will's face. Will's like, I, I managed to get by with two. I mean, I yeah. I, this, this, uh, you saw the sympathy in my eyes, man. Jesus, <laughs> I don't recommend it. That's an expensive two's Christmas. Good, two, yeah, two is the two's the right number. Stick with two, and I've done all the numbers. Well, so <laughs> two is the one. <laughs> Stick with two. Yeah, I remember uh, two. They were the days. So how was it? I was, I was Christmas and all that, and your Christmas and New Year and all that. We locked down. I was. It, it was all right, really. It was a bit sort of, uh, you know, obviously a bit different. But um, I don't know what what you're like, but I'm using. Covid is a bit of an excuse not to have people over. 
and see people. Yeah. And so Christmas usually for us is full on. There's you know uncles, aunties, brothers, sisters, nephews, nieces, mums, dad, grandparents, and it's just a it's non-stop. So this year it was great. Just like sorry, COVID, COVID. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so we. Yeah, it was that, it was it was all right really. We had my parents came over uh, for dinner, and um, and my gran who lives with my parents, who's ninety seven, she I sort of gave her the choice. I said, "Look, we're up, you're in mum and dad's bubble." I said, "But you know there are kids here. It's up to you if you want to come over or not." I, I, you're ninety seven. I'm not going to patronise you and tell you, you can't come. Yeah. Um, and she's just like, "I'm coming. I'm not. I'm ninety seven. I'm already an extra time." So <laughs> it's a bonus. So she just uh, so she came as well, and it was uh, yeah, it was delightful. That's so a, yeah, we had a nice Christmas day actually. That's a big difference between your family and mine because when I finished in the Caribbean, I didn't know whether I was going to go back to England or come to Florida. And I asked my mum, I said, oh, "I've not seen you for what should I do? Mom? I've not seen you for ages. Should I come and visit?" She went, "I'm in the high risk category. I'm, don't don't you come back here? I don't want to see you." Don't come here. And she did. She <laughs> she banned me from going visiting her. So I was like, "Yeah, there's the difference between our family." Yeah. <laughs> Will was talking before about. Um, you know, t- today particularly, sort of woke up and he was like, oh, it feels a bit like Groundhog Day. It- it's a bit different for me because in-, in Florida, you, you can move about um, and I- right. I'm just being sensible. But, you know, I'm able nice. to get to the beach. I'm able to if go where I choose and try and just, you know, be... Tell us more things. Yeah, Tell should I? I go to the beach, I go into the pool and stuff. I basically can do anything I want, Jason. It's awful. But, uh, I'm a piss on me conflict we'll while you're at it. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, how, how is it for you? How's that like the whole... We were thinking like it's probably like that for a lot of people. How's the whole lockdown thing going for you? Still all right? Even out doing gigs? the only way you can just... Disc- no, no, not, not at all. I mean, early on there was a few like, you know, I did a couple of driving gigs... Uh, which were just weird, just people honking the horn instead of laughing. Um, weird, that's and, weird. Like, that was odd. Really weird, really weird. And also, you know, like in a theatre, you can't see someone leaving if they're not enjoying it, but if someone's doing a three-point turn, <laughs> like it takes a while. <laughs> I mean, ah, nah, yeah. I'm, over, I'm over this. <laughs> and so, then, then wheels spinning out the car park, yeah. gravel going everywhere, <laughs> going, that was shit. Yeah, so it was, um, yeah, they were a bit of a, an eye-opener. And then there was a couple of socially distant gigs that we, um, you know, people with screens and masks and all that. And they were all right, to be fair. They were well organised. and But it's not the same. So I've just delayed everything. I put tour back till September and, and all that. So um, so in that respect, no, the work isn't happening. Um, there's little bits, like like you said, Death in Paradise, another couple of little odd jobs here and there. But... Um, but in general, I'm just yeah, I'm just sort of homeschooling and and, yeah. and doing people's podcasts. How is the homeschooling? To, uh, it's not something I have to. It's not something I have to contend with this homeschooling thing. But well, I mean, I how you find it? Because I, the idea of Will having a uh, take part in educating his kids <laughs> is yeah. is a terrifying thought for me. <laughs> how old are your kids, Will? <laughs> my son's sixteen and my daughter's twelve. So right, so sixteen-year-old. So he's at college. Well, he, he's, yeah. well, he stays in bed till three o'clock in the afternoon. So that's that's a bonus. So he, yeah. don't, so he don't want he don't want anything till at least half <laughs> past three, four o'clock. So that's all right. Um, and my daughter, yeah. my daughter's doing online schooling, so she gets up, gets a laptop open, yeah, and then that's it. Yeah. Um, so that's what, what mine could, are like now. The, what could I teach? The her? first one. No, I mean the first. Well, I, I my youngest daughter's six, and I'm. You know, looking at her phonics and her maths and all that, and I'm like having a quick Google behind her back, like to see how to do it. So, and that's a six-year-old. So, I've got no yeah. chance for the eleven-year-olds. Uh, the first lockdown was much harder. Um, I started to think teaching was about seventy percent printing because that's all. Yeah, I just yeah, was doing yeah. that all day, just printing stuff and fact sheets and all. That. Um, and then, of course, you know, everyone's evolved, and teachers have, are nailing it now, and they've got to a point where they're doing this online schooling, and uh, and it's all right. I just feel sorry for them because I'm sure, like your kids as well, and you'll remember as well when you're at school, Ralph. Is you know, actually learning education is about forty percent of school life. Yeah, the sure. rest of it's like who did what, who said what. He yeah, did that. Yeah. He did that. Yeah, and, it's, yeah. and coming home and having a gossip and, yeah. and learning the rules of you know society. the Serengeti and yes, yeah, society. Yes, yeah, you know, it's social, just learning the rules. Of rules so it? it's hard that you know because when I picked my kids up from school, even the primary, even at primary school, I never ever got him in the car and said, "Right, what did you learn today?" I'd say, "Right, who was naughtiest in your class today?" <laughs> and, I would, and they'd tell me. And I've got this little. I have this little trick with the kids where I tell them that I'm able to tell whether or not someone's good or bad, purely by their first name. 
<laughs> and uh, so we played this. So we played this game for about a decade, uh, and they still think I'm like a genius because so, g- generally nine times out of ten I'm bang on. So hold on, where, where does Ralph yeah. and Will fit into that? Well, I mean, you're adults now, so you've had time for society to <laughs> catch up with you. But if you were children, if you were children, my kids come home and said, and I said, right, go on then, name, name the kids in your class. And they said, Ralph, I'd say, naughty. 100%. <laughs> he is a wrong one. Absolute wrong one. Yeah, yeah. Fair. Talks all the time, messes around, <laughs> yeah. doesn't concentrate, do not be his friend, he's going to drag you down. Uh, Will, and if someone if they came back and said Will, I'd say, well, first I'd say, is he William or is he Will? Because that's obviously a point of difference. If he was William, I'd say, he's sound. No. He's, 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 he's there to he's, learn. He's not. He's definitely a he's Will. He's there to learn. <laughs> <laughs> if he's Will, I'd say, let him and Ralph hang out together. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I was actually, I'm actually, I'm William, but at school, there was a period where people called me Wilf. And I'd soon, I, I, I nipped that right in the bud. Wilf, I was like, listen, yeah, so not that I got a Christmas card with Wilf on it. And then one kid that was a Wilf. bit of a geek, he, he, Wilf. I went, to Wilf, I was like, well, that can fuck off. Don't be starting calling me that shit. Don't get that to catch on. And this kid, this kid who I didn't really speak too much, he spelt it wrong and spelt it with a TH on the end. He said Wilf. He just didn't get it. And I was like, well, you, you can definitely fuck off. Uh, I wanted you, to ask you, Jason. Did at school? Oh, go on. Oh, well, I wanted to ask well, you, Jason, just because about school. Yeah. Um, going, what was mm. you like at school growing up in Salford and that? Was it? Was you always like the clown of the class? Was it always in you to be a comedian or a performer? No, nah, not like not when I think back. Like I didn't go to school in Salford, so I was born in Salford, and then right. we moved to Moss Side for a bit of peace and quiet. Mm-hmm. That's where uh, I'm so <laughs> I mean, we that's from. Yeah. No, so we went. We, we grew up there, and we went to school in Cholton, really. So Cholton, born in Lane Estate. So it was pretty rough, but it wasn't like. I don't know if you, what you what you were like growing up, but I've said I've said this phrase a few times to my mum recently, which was when when we were growing up, as long as you didn't bring the police to your parents' door, you were a good kid. Like that was just that was the line. It was just like he never brings the police to our door, and that just meant you you were good. Like that was our level. Oh, you didn't as get long caught. As you a criminal. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, how, many, how many times acceptable. did you bring the police to your door, Will? Not only a couple, not many. No, it was literally. Just, <laughs> <laughs> no, and, uh, and just sort of simple. Like, yeah, nothing, I wasn't a bad. Yeah. I wasn't a criminal. I was too scared of my dad to be a criminal. I just, I think, yeah, I, I think, same, I, did, yeah. I got dared to, I got dared to run over a car. And I was a parked car, and I got dared to run on the bonnet on the roof on the back and jump off it. And the bloke looked out of his window and saw me. And then phoned the police. And my dad went round and <laughs> my dad yeah. went round and threatened to punch his head in because he went, "Listen, I'll deal with him. You don't need to phone the police." <laughs> to the <book. laughs> so that was that sorted. Uh, <laughs> so, so who was your inspirations then at school and to what made you want to do this? You must have. There must have been a part of you that wanted to get involved in performing arts or something. Yeah, to be on I was stage. always interested. I had a really good English teacher. And um, who, I remember what's like you said. I was messing around in class. I was always at the back with the lads and, and having a laugh. And uh, you know that thing where you're like in class and you're, and I, mem- I remember it really vividly, which was whatever, I can't remember the story, but I remember telling my mates, Simon and Paul, a little um, story. And they did that thing where they just, in a, in a real silence, everyone's reading Tess of the D'Urbervilles, and then just in an absolute silence, there was like a bah! like massive laugh at the back. And as you know, that book's not a fucking barrel of laughs. So, so the teacher straight away is like, who's that? And um, and then she said, which I imagine for most people is their worst nightmare. She said, well, if it's so funny, Jason, why don't you share it with the rest of the class? And I went, all right, in re- result. <laughs> <laughs> so I told everybody this story. You know, we got a little giggle. And, uh, and she said, I want to see you after school. And she was a brilliant, brilliant teacher. She wasn't one of them who was just like dismissed you just for being naughty. She, she was always trying to work you out. And afterwards, she said to me, that was a funny story you told to everybody. It was inappropriate to tell it at this time. You know, you shouldn't have told it, but, what, you know, it was a fun story. You obviously enjoyed telling it, and, and, and everybody enjoyed listening to it. She said, I want you, I've got extra homework tonight. I want you to write that story down. And so I wrote it down. Next day I came in, I gave her this, you know, 300 words, 400 words or whatever. I gave her this homework. She marked it. And then she said, now I want you to go back and rewrite it, but I want you to take out, uh, any of the stuff that's sort of not interesting or doesn't move the story on, and I want you to replace it 
with your imagination. Make things up in, in between the, 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 the sort of plot points of your little story and, and invent people and, and, and play with the characters. And I did, and I did that a couple of times for her. And she used to set me these like extra homeworks that weren't the official English wow. homework of, of, of the thing, yeah. And essentially, that's what I do now as a stand up is that I, I you know, I, I, real things happen, real stories happen, and then I make up the little bits in between to, to make them funny. And, that is and amazing. I remember when I went to Edinburgh Festival. Um, and I, I I got nominated for the the Perrier Award up there and uh, for my for for a show I was doing and she was the first person I, I sent flowers to just to say that's brilliant you know I that's wouldn't amazing. be up here if, if you did not teacher, taken though. that what time. What difference that makes? Yeah. Right? Well, this is the thing. Totally. Well, yeah, yeah. You were talking about kids will miss out on although they are doing it sort of virtually now, so it's not. As mm. bad. What was her name? The teacher, Jude Cooper, Mrs. Cooper. Mrs. Cooper. I had a teacher at school like that, um, and he kept me in school. Um, and the other teachers wanted to throw me out of school. And he kept me in because he said, I know what you're trying to do. I know you, you want to perform and you want to do all this, but you're disrupting other people in the class and it's not fair on them. And he sat me down, he spoke to me like a, like a, a man would and just sat there and said, I'll stick by you. I'll keep you in this school. Um, and you go and do what you got to do after, but don't disrupt people in the class. That's all I ask. And I respected him for it. And when I was um, on stage once doing Oh What A Night, um, he turned up and he left me a note saying, I knew I was right to stick by you. Um, oh. So it was a very similar sort of story. But yeah. yeah, yeah. what was the story? Could you remember the story? Yeah, what was the story that you told in class? I can't remember. I think it was, when I think back, we, there, was a, there was a point where, and it starts very dark, this, but essentially somebody, a friend of a friend's boyfriend uh, died in quite dramatic, he was murdered, essentially. This is, oh, yeah. Yeah. I can see how, and, how this is funny. Oh yeah, yeah. No, but all yeah, yeah. that's the that's the all the that's, best all the best that's stories the, start. That's with the it. thing with life, isn't it? It's always on that edge, you know. Yeah. Um, but so, and you think that was absolute travesty, it's absolute horrendous. I mean, he was a criminal himself, and blah blah blah. But the way, the way I got involved was my um, my mum went to this to this flat to uh, to sort of help clear up. And invariably, back 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 in those days, once this person had died, well, all this stuff in this house was up for grabs. You know, it's like, well, he's not, he doesn't need it. So me and my uncle ended up trying to carry this cooker down from, like, the 10th floor of this block of flat. I'm like a 13-year-old boy, and I'm carrying this cooker down the the, uh, the stairs. And in, what ends up happening is we we didn't take out... The, you know, back in the day, we used to have, like, a chip pan full of fat. Yeah. You used to yeah, sit yeah. there all the time, like, you know. Forever, for years, yeah. Forever. And we'd yeah. heard of chip pan fires, but we were like, we'd, di- we'd rather have chips, thanks. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> you know what I mean? Exactly. We'll I know this could set the fire alight. We'll risk but... dying in our beds because the yeah. homemade chips are great. I'm, wi- I'm willing, willing to take the risk because I love chips. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and it, at, right at the bottom, the, the, the door opened and this chip pan, it fell and all the fat went on over me What I, and I had school shoes on at the oh. time. Well, and uh, and so we're having a all over my as well, <laughs> all over yeah, all over my trousers. And so we went back upstairs, and my mum said, well, "What are you going to do? You got you know you can't walk in them tra- them train and them shoes." So she went into this dead man's bedroom, <laughs> and and took a pair of and yeah, she found a pair of shoes that were my size. They were bright red kickers. <laughs> Remember kickers? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They were bright red kickers. And um, and she gave she said wear these right so now I've got bright red kickers on, and she said they're the smart them aren't they like you know when mums are doing that, and my mum over the years had done things like painted an extra stripe onto a pair of trainers so it was three stripes and that, <laughs> um, yeah. so we got in and she paint she painted these red kickers black, <laughs> so I could wear them for school so she couldn't so, but paint like. Just paint, not like special <laughs> shoe paint, like just paint that out of a cupboard that you would paint a wall with. And so I've got a pair of red kickers that have been painted in emulsion. Um, and I had them on, and I'm sat at the back of this classroom in, and, and I sort of, and I think what I did was I showed the boys, I sort of scratched a bit of the paint away. And then when they saw, because they were like, they there's the no way kit. this story happened. And then when I showed them the red, that's when they, <laughs> they burst Dead man's yeah. shoes. Dead man's shoes. Dead man's shoes. Dead man's shoes. Yeah. Are you sure? Okay, I'm, trying to work out, I'm trying to work out which bits of that story, though, are the, are the end result of the extra homework and you making the bits. I mean, because I'm yeah. thinking, the original story was, 
She went to Winfields and she can only find some red kickers. <laughs> yes. And you've just done it like, that's so embarrassing. You've had to make up that a guy died. Yeah. The, the chip pan fire and all that stuff. <laughs> yeah. Do you, we was, uh, me and Ralph was talking about, we talk about it quite a lot, especially with you doing so well and all that. And, you know, you talk about how we first met. Yeah. Um, yeah. And just, it's just weird. Um, how things like that happen and you, and you sort of come together and you meet and then you go off in different directions and then you see people's career all just blow up and we we were over the moon for you I mean obviously oh. it's just it's been amazing how your career's gone but you I mean them them days doing warm up for two pints I mean yeah. was, what do you, was that, what, do you was remember, that a scary thing remember, to do yeah is there anything you remember particularly about doing warm up for I, two pints I remember it being one of the most like I loved it because you know if you think I was at the time I was doing the clubs and, you know, even just to let you in on the numbers, like, I'd be doing 100 quid a gig, like, tops, you know, and that was a dream, you know, because I'd be doing five or six shows a week and uh, anything in London, yeah. a couple of shows a night, so you're laughing, you know. And the dream yeah. was to try and get to a point where you could do the comedy store where you would get 200 quid a night. Warm-up at the mm. time paid £300 a show. Wow. wow. And so, like, for me, it was an absolute no-brainer. It was indoors, everyone was nice, no one was hammered, other than the cast. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. and, uh, fair enough. <laughs> and it was a lovely, you know, it was a, it was a tight ship. You know, everyone knew what they were doing. Um, the only infuriating bit of warm up is it's not about you as a stand up. When you're on yeah. doing your gigs, yeah. it's all about you for those twenty minutes or an hour, whatever you're doing. It's all about you. So to essentially play second fiddle, well, f about fifth or sixth fiddle, you know, uh, in a room. Oh. It was hard. It took a while to get to sort of get used to that uh, because you'd be in the middle of a joke. It wouldn't matter if, if where you are in the story or, or the, you could have spent five minutes setting oh, something up for a big punchline. Yeah. Right, we're ready to go. You're like, and then the nun yeah. said, "Ah, oh, fuck it, forget it." You yeah. know, so <laughs> like, <laughs> so that was you know that was uh, infuriating. And then interestingly, I don't know if I ever told you this because I, I was actually signed up to do another series of warm ups, and then I didn't I didn't do them, and. What had happened? I don't know what the part was now, but what had happened was I was getting on very well with um, production as well. You know, obviously I was out the front there, and I think it was Stephen McCrum, was it? Was the <laughs> producer? Mm -hmm. that yeah, show? that's yeah. right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, who actually produced Scarborough as well when I when I did that last year, and um, and I was having a chat one day with him, and he said uh, he said, "Oh, have you thought about acting and stuff?" I said, "Well, I, I have, you know, I've, I have studied acting and uh, you know at university and stuff. I, I would like to do it." He said, "There might be a part in this you could do if you want." Really? I said, oh, I'd love, I'd love to, I'd love to do that. It wasn't Munch, was it? <laughs> it was, it wasn't Munch. No, it was just a one-off. It was to play. I, I, I have a feeling like Sheridan's character was about to go on a cruise or something. And oh it? yes, and she had yes. an agent. She had an Who agent. Play and it, agent. Ted Robbins it, played. It, it ended up being Ted Robbins, right? Yes. So I as it happened, they. So I'd spoke to Ted a few weeks earlier and uh, we were chatting about warm-up because he's the king of the warm-up, Ted Robbins. He's, oh, yeah. he's the boss when it comes yeah. to that. He used to and be, I remember when I was <laughs> going to see Mrs. Merton when Caroline yeah. was doing that and I was really young. Ted was the guy, who was the man. He's there. the man, he like, yeah, he does the lot. Yeah. And so uh, we chatted about it and, and he said to me, he said, the only problem with warm-up, he says, I'm trapped in warm-up now, he said, um, is because it's much harder to get a good warm-up than it is to get a good actor, to get a good guest to get a good anything because it's su it's such a you know it's very specific job that that you need to be able to do and i sort of didn't really think about it and then Stephen mccrum said oh do you want to do you want to do this part um in in the show do you want to do, do you want to be this agent in the show it's only a few lines but you know it'll be a laugh so i said to my agent <laughs> i'd love to do it it'd be amazing um and then she came back to me and said the the production team have said would you do the part but also be able to do warm-up on the night <laughs> Would you do both jobs? Right. Saving money, two for, one. two for one. Get two for one. Get two for one. That's a BBC <laughs> for you. Two for fucking yeah. one. Yeah. And then they go, we can't pay you any extra. <laughs> I said, I don't know if I can, to be honest. Like, it's so different, you know, to be able to do that. I don't know how I would be able to do that and then go do me bit and then come back out to the crown. Or... That'd be so funny, wouldn't it be like? Be anyway, oh, hold on. I'll tell you the rest of that yeah. joke in a bit. I've just got to pop off, get into costume. How's that going to work? So I thought, oh, so I said to her, I said, look, I tell them I can't, actually. I said, look, I can't, I can't do that. I'd love to do the part. I can't do the warm-up on the night. They came back. They said, look, we've gone for a different actor uh, because we'd rather you did the warm-up on the night than in it. I said, okay, fair enough. That's fair enough. You've got a proper actor. Turn up on the day. Fucking Ted Robbins, king of warm-up. I was like... <laughs> 
What do you got? <laughs> he could have done this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you were like, "Oh, they've gone a different way because they, they don't trust anyone else to do the warm up." Absolutely <laughs> livid, I was. And uh, <laughs> I've never done angry warm up before, but uh, no, it was. Uh, and afterwards, Ted actually, I caught Ted in. Uh, he came to my dressing room. Uh, well, dressing room. I had a little sort of area that I was allowed. And, uh, cupboard. He came to yeah, your cupboard. <laughs> yeah. And he, he came over and he said, he said, oh, what's she doing your warm-up tonight, Jace? And uh, he said, you're really good at it. And I said, oh, thanks, Ted. And obviously coming from him mm. meant the world, you know. And he said, have you got much Have you got much more? And I said, yeah, they've, asked, they've just asked me if I'll do next series, actually. Uh, I've got three left on this and I've got another series. And he said, can I give you a bit of advice? I said, yeah. He said, he said do these three that you contracted and then never do warm-up ever again. Wow. And I said, why? Wow. why? And he said that again. He said, because otherwise you'll get, he said, like me, you will get stuck in the, wow. as the warm-up guy. And so I took his advice, and uh, and, I, and I thank and him. You regret that now because because you've not really made it as a stand up. Really, <laughs> your career went tits up after that, didn't it? Yeah, yeah, you just disappeared after that. No, I might what send was it? Ted, what was the some flowers what? as well. <laughs> what was the break, Jace? What was it? What was the moment where you think, oh, do you know, what? I'm on that conveyor belt now to actually um, make it and really make success of, I guess of your career? I was very lucky, actually. Um, I mean, I don't believe in luck in as much as you know. The harder we work, the luckier we get, you know. But yeah, yeah, yeah. you yeah. can have yeah. moments where you know, just serendipity came together and, and helped you out. I uh, I went up to Edinburgh. I had a good Edinburgh in 2005, and like I said, I got nominated, and that, and that sort of because TV people are generally a bit lazy. So once you're in, like, the top five of something, they can sort of go, oh, we'll just look at these five rather than <laughs> yeah, traipsing yeah, over true. the country, you know. True. And, uh, and so, yeah, I, I, a decent Edinburgh. Met a few decent people up there and had a meeting about being a guest on 8 Out of 10 Cats. And right. uh, so I, I, I did a couple of auditions, was a guest. I was on Dave Spikey's team. Dave Spikey was the captain. And, and again, just fortuitously... Um, I was on, it was me, Dave Spikey and Piers Morgan were on the same team. And Piers Morgan, um, I don't know if you know who Piers Morgan is. Uh, I'm but, vaguely aware of him, yeah, yeah. sure. So Piers fan. was um, sort of, you know, he likes a combat, doesn't he? And uh, maybe he's learned his lesson over the years, I don't know. But there was definitely a moment in the show where he had a, he had a couple of goes at me even though we were on the same team, he'd had a, I was sort of an easy target, brand new, never done telly, you know. And he'd had a couple of goals at me. One was something about the North, and he'd had a bit of a go at that, and I'd sort of took it and laughed it off. But then later on, he'd done a joke about me being overweight or fat or something like that. It was a bit l- below the belt. Everyone sort of was a bit like, Ugh. And the audience, they were laughing, he said it, and then they just, it went silent. Mm. Oh, and, wow. uh, and there was a moment of quiet, and I sort of looked at the audience and I think I ended up saying something like you did that and you know and it sort of laughed we laughed off the awkwardness of it um, and then it was a couple of times I had to go back a couple of times and in the end he actually put his hands up and he apologised he said and he said I'll never go up against a comedian ever again I'm sorry and you know, we, and then we let him off then, and we, and we did the rest of the show. And so it was sort of one of those shows where people were talking about it. You know, it was sort of before Twitter and and whatever took off, but it was yeah. you know, it was a a moment, I guess, a telly moment that people were talking about at the time. And as it happens, that same week, Dave Spikey had decided to leave Eight Out of Ten Cats. Oh wow, great! So I was <laughs> sort of just in people's minds, I think, and they were thinking, right, who can we get to take over? Oh, this guy, we can use the same train fare. Uh, <laughs> from north. And, uh, and so yeah I managed and to he could do the warm up as well <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so I was lucky really got the job uh, and then the same year uh, uh, you know a decent live at the Apollo when that was a ma- when that was you know getting 7-8 million and, uh, and yeah. then toured off the back of that and and that was it. So yeah, happy days, really. Brilliant. If there's a downside, Brilliant. if there's one downside to that whole story, it's mm. that you in in a very oh, don't a very say real it. Do way, not say uh, it. Do not. No. I know you're going to say. It. <laughs> uh, probably not. I was just going to say you now owe oh Piers in, Morgan. In very, you owe Piers Morgan for your entire career. <laughs> you're not the first person. To, you're not the first person to say that. Have a guess who else says that on occasion? <laughs> Piers Morgan. Morgan. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <Morgan>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was like, "Yeah, you oh. see, I was. Yeah, how lucky you are." If it wasn't for me, you'd be nothing. But, um. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, did, you know, cool. there's, there's a thing though that I think that you've done um, because you didn't just stick to the comedy, um, which is 
you know, I, I'm the same, you know what I mean? And I think a lot of us are where you think, you know, you, you don't want to just do the, what these other things you want to try. You think, well, I love yeah. that, but I'd love to have a go at that. And it's, you've seen to have... You've, I mean, I'm sort of in a, in, a, in a nice way saying leave a fucking bit of meat on the bone for the rest of us. You've done <laughs> oh, yeah. acting, oh, yeah. you've done musical theatre, yeah, yeah. uh, singing. Have yeah. you, did you if have we an don't album get, out If we well? don't get a job, Jason, we can't just go on tour and make some fucking money for the rest of the <laughs> right. You know what I mean? I like, leave some for the rest of us. No, but well, you know, no, and, uh, and, well, and, and drama as well. Jason's done, like, you know, serious drama. Ordinary, did you do know. Ordinary Lives? Ordinary Lives, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was yeah. fucking brilliant. Yeah, I, I was up for that part, the twat. I was up for that part as well. Thanks, Jason. Cheers, <laughs> <Sorry, bro. laughs> Jason. Sorry, and it was an absolute uh, what dream. What I wanted to say absolute is... Absolute dream of the show. Yeah, and you were really good at um, it, which only makes it worse. <laughs> like, if you'd have been shit, I could have gone around to all my mates and just shit talked you going... Oh, I think you're both doing act- all right, to be fair. They're not getting proper actors anymore. They're getting comedians. It's like, oh, no, it I can do that as well. Damn what I wanted like. to say is, how the music side of things, oh, the yeah. singing side of because. That's a whole, you know, because I was always, there's a lot of things you do, you do in singing, you say, well, if you do singing, they, they might not let you do acting anymore. If yeah, you do acting, yeah, you can't yeah. Do, you know, there's a bit of, there's all that bollocks, but that, yeah. I know. You, you don't do Mustang put, Sally, do you, Jason? Because that's very much Will's territory. Takes a no, piss out of me. I can only do it when I'm pissed. <laughs> I, I'll do the, uh, I'll do the, right, Sally, I'll do that bit. <laughs> yeah, okay, fair <laughs> enough. But what um, I wanted yeah, to say I'm, is, um, music. What mm. happened there? How would you get involved in that? Well, I, music music was my first love. No, music was uh, sort of something that was part of my upbringing, really. Cause my, so my grandparents came over from Dublin in the 50s, and they were in a little duo, little uh, folk duo. And they used to sing you know, Irish songs and the country and western. Mm-hmm. And then they had 11 kids, and uh, they all learnt instruments and uh, taught how to sing. And then they were in this big show band in the 70s and 80s. So when I was growing up on a Sunday, it'd be, we'd go to the Little Western pub in uh, Moss Side and we'd watch my gran and, and family all, all singing. And then in the second half of their show, they would get people up, whoever was in. Where's One-Eyed Willie? Yeah, come on up, Willie. Where's John, John with the, the mandolin? You come up. And then I would go up. I'd be about seven or eight and I would, um, I'd sing some Elvis. Uh, some Neil Diamond or whatever, and uh, and and that was that's how I sort of first started really. So I always was able to sing, and I always loved singing. But then when yeah. comedy sort of took off, it sort of took a back burner really because it's very hard to mix the two, and uh, and 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 especially in the UK, people people really struggle with if you don't stay in your lane. You yeah, know, exactly. Really, yeah. You know, it's not like the well, Yanks are like, you know, the Yanks are a no. bit like, what did you used to present the, the Apprentice? Come and oh, be president no. if you want. I, so, like, yeah, exactly. Well, yeah. Totally. Yeah. You know, I, I, found exactly being, right. I found that being over here, the attitude over here is like, oh, and you can do this. Great. Let's get you to yeah. do that. It's a very different attitude. Oh, yeah. well, I think women are better at realising you can do other things. Like I guess because they're able to multitask, but blokes very <laughs> blokes yeah. do struggle with like, stick to your day job, mate. Like, um, yeah. But so I just enjoyed doing it and I managed to get a part in Sweeney Todd in about 2012. Uh, but by genuinely, it was on Spotlight and I just, you know, I just asked for a, an audition and I auditioned three or four times and, and, and got this this uh, sort of smallish part in Sweeney Todd. And then, like you, like you go, you know, once you've done one or two, you know, it gradually, you know, you, you get up for, you know, a few more. So um, I love doing it, um, but I love the stand up, you know, and I, I, I have to sort of have the two really. Uh, running. What about the mass singer? Uh, how was that being the ed- was it the Ed Jog you was on the mass singer? I was the Ed Jog last year. Yeah, you not are you, how was that? Of you two, how is was it? that? You two must what? be up for that every time it comes up now. Mass singer. Do you know what? Actually, I've never. I usually get asked to do everything. As like it, yeah. you know, you you you. I'm a celebs and you this. You, mm. We all get asked to do them because they're always looking for people. But um, yeah, they never asked me for the mass singer. And it's it's not until this moment that I've ever been slightly insulted. But why? <laughs> You could, Why you, never you won't be able to get the that? you won't be able to get the costume head on past your nose. That's the problem. <laughs> well, unless if, I could if, be if like, is, there, is, there, is there a big bird with a giant beak? I don't know. If a, if, a, if a parakeet, if there's ever a parakeet on the mass singer, it's Ralph. <laughs> keep it on. Keep it on. <laughs> <laughs> To be fair, Will, so you how was sausage, it? though. <laughs> yeah. How was it, though, Jace, being on that? Was it Mate, good? it was an absolute was laugh, yeah. I'm, honestly, it's one of the most fun I've ever had. Um, I, I think partly because you were covered up in this mask and suit and that, and you could become this little daft character. And so you could sing songs and sing in a way that you wouldn't do if people could see your face. It, it, you know, the inhibition, I guess, sort of goes because yeah. nobody knows it's you. And because you filmed it all in advance. You're not looking at Twitter like after the first week and letting that affect your 
you know, mm-hmm. thoughts oh, or, yeah, or yeah, performances yeah. and stuff. So um, I just loved it. And it was, it was the secrecy was like, uh, you know, I think the government could learn a, a thing or two from the, how they do the mass singer. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, we don't know who any of the mass singers are, but we we know all the plans of the government about COVID weeks before they tell us, you know. Um, but you're like, I still don't know who the sausage is. Um, you know, but, <laughs> By the way, mentally. speaking of the sausage, about... About once every two days currently at the moment, mm. Catherine Drysdale's Instagram is filled with yet another video of her going, yeah. and she's getting she's getting more and more pissed off. Like well, at first it was like, hi guys, I'm not the sausage, not, right? I know. And now if you look at her Instagram, she's going, okay, this is getting ridiculous. You know how angry Catherine is. I imagine it must do, because I mean, even though I was the hedgehog, I was getting annoyed. So, um, Although it, it does, a, I'll tell you a funny story. I was, um, so I was, uh, so obviously filmed it all, all done, signed an NDA, you can't tell anybody. Didn't even tell my own kids that I was, uh, you know, that I was oh, doing wow. it. And uh, my daughter was furious in the final when she, she was at a sleepover with her mates. I was like, I think I would know if it was my dad. <laughs> <laughs> Living. So uh, that week, uh, I think it was like week three, say something like that. And I'd like I said, I've been getting tweets and stuff, messages uh, after the show. Is it you? And I noticed a couple of other people. It was Michael Ball. Me, Michael Crawford, Alfie Bow, you know, couple like lovely, you know, company to be in. Um, so I'm, I'm good friends with Alfie, and we're sort of having a chat midweek. And I've not told him that I'm doing my singer, of course. And it comes up in conversation. Uh, he said, "God, I've had to come off Twitter over a weekend." He said, "I'm, I'm getting hounded by people asking me if I'm the hedgehog on on the mass singer." I said, "Yeah, me too." I'm getting all these, you know, messages asking if it's me. I said, "Have you seen it yet?" He said, "Well, I've not seen any of the episode, but I watched it on catch up the other day to see what all the fuss was about." And I watched the Hedgehog sang, and I thought to myself, "I'm not that shit at singing, am I?" Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. He said that to you, and I went, "I'm on the phone like that." I'm like, "Yeah, no, I know what you mean." Yeah, like, yeah, me what, too. What? Yeah. What do you mean? Were you like, like yeah, I had, the, I had the same thought. Yeah, I was mean? furious too. What do you mean? He said, he said he's, breathing, he's just his breathing's, you know, his breathing's all over the place. You know, I've trained, haven't I? You know, I wouldn't be breathing like that. He's all over the place. <laughs> and I'm like, maybe the mask is fucking heavy, Alf. Maybe that's the reason. Maybe that's the reason his fucking breathing's all over the place. So, <laughs> so I sort of let it go. like, And, uh, and then, um, then the final happened. And obviously, masks come off, and, and it's me. And the, when I got off the, when I, when I watched the show, sorry, uh, afterwards, I, one of the first texts I got was Alfie Bow, and it just said, "I think I owe you an apology." <laughs> Oh, really? I thought you were going to yeah. say, I thought you were going to say, Texas, you're going, sort your fucking breathing out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no, yeah. it's a nice guy. I'll give you a few yeah. It was, uh, yeah, it was fun, though. It's totally a random show, though, like, you, you know, because you, you don't know who the other contestants are. Oh really? Yeah. No, oh, you don't know who anyone is. Yeah. So, and obviously, still nerve So wait. So, so they put you in your dressing room. So they literally yep. pick you up. I was in the middle of rehearsals for a play, and I was, and I, they pick, pick us up three o'clock. Drive us up to this studio, uh, and about twenty minutes out of the studio, you balaclava, mask, uh, just no. like a, a visor, you know, uh, a, a big hoodie that says "Don't speak to me," uh, gloves. Uh, you know everything to sort of disguise everything that you can say. Hoodie up, and then you dropped off literally outside the door. One person gets you. You're not allowed to talk to anyone. They're not allowed to talk to you. You come up, You go in your dressing room, and you're in there till about 20 minutes before you're due on stage. And they've got someone out there in their dressing room. You come out of your dressing room. You go in. Only sound and, and costume know it's you because they need to you wow. know, sort you out. And then, yeah, and then you're on. And you sing live. You know, it's all the mics inside the, the mask. Wow. And, wow. Uh, yeah, it's all secret. But it's weird because sometimes you're backstage and you're with the other cost, you know, other people in costumes and that. And you know what performers are like? They're nervous, you know. And so you end up, like, holding hands with each other, even though you don't know who they are. <laughs> <trying. laughs> and you're just nervous of holding hands with the fox and the monster, you know. And uh, <laughs> nervous, like. And it's only when I'm watching the show, wow. I just... Like week four or something, I said, "Oh my god, I spent two weeks holding CeeLo Green's hand." Like I just didn't, re- I just didn't realize. Just a pair of us holding hands, yeah. like no yeah, idea who each other are. Yeah, yeah, it was great fun. Yeah. What a bizarre show! What a bizarre idea! <laughs> In fact, no. how, how was that? How did they present? How did they pitch that idea to you? to be a contestant <laughs> and what was it about it that like I, yeah. I'm trying to imagine it's massive in America going, isn't it? now yeah I think it was massive show, in America it yeah. was Korean and then it was massive it was in America show, yeah. um, and then they came to us and I was um, I was sort of because I've never really done any of them sort of celebrity things or anything like that it's not really been my bag but um, it was a it was a 
producer that I worked with on 8 out of 10 Cats, funny enough, uh, Derek McLean, and he sort of came to me. And at that point, they were still unsure. They, they didn't have a lineup of of, uh, of judges. They, I don't think they even had a host, but they were just trying to get people in. And I and, and I was actually originally talking about uh, judging, being a judge uh, on the on the show. Um, and then gradually, after I was talking to them, they said, "I think it'd be more fun to be a contestant." And I said, "I think it probably will be as well." So, um, yeah. so yeah, that was it. Really, just it came up. So it, it was sold in that. It's just it'll be a laugh, and it'll be a massive show. And also, you get to show a lot of people that you're able to sing who might not know, you know, and, and that's always fun. Yeah, yeah, and it's also because you enjoy singing. It's a way of, and, and you, you, I think you said, I saw an interview. Where you said it <clears throat> that when you're because you're in the mask, it takes away a bit of the nerves that you would have. Oh, they can't 100%. See you, so. Yeah, I'm doing like Sia. Uh, you know, singing Chandelier by Sia. I think there's no way I'd be on wow on telly giving yeah. it. Yeah. Well, in the yeah. in the hedgehog, you're like, and I bet inside the be thing, like your your facials are going like crazy. When oh, be I mean, a bit more... absolute like yeah. Joey Tribbiani, like <laughs> acting, like really going for it. Yeah, yeah. it was, um, but it was great. It was you really well looked after. And actually, I had quite a few decent names like uh, of people ringing me for series two to go. Hey, what was it like? You know, I'd be, I'd be, really? you know, I've been asked to do it and stuff. You know, so they. I was about to say like who, but obviously you can't no, tell me. I won't want to spoil it for <laughs> you, but yeah. Did, yeah. did you? I'll tell you who. Did, it was did you do an album? Drysdale. <laughs> well, maybe it was. <laughs> maybe maybe it's a whole huge the, double book. Playing the long yeah. con, yeah. 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 <laughs> did you do an album after that, Jace? Did you do an um, album? No, I did one. That? I did one a couple oh. of years before, actually. Um, All right. Yeah, I did one. Um, I wanted to call it. Well, Bradley Walsh has got one. Uh, that's what I want to call my album. But he done one like a year before. <laughs> and it done really well, you know. And uh, so obviously they were on the lookout for like, uh, you know, uh, people who could do albums. And I'd always wanted to do one, and it was all right. It washed its face, you know. Um, and Good it was. Uh, I think we 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 nipped in at number ten. We were number ten for two weeks. So it was top ten effectively. You've had a top ten album for mate. two weeks. Yeah, we knocked um, we knocked Shania Twain out of uh, not out of the ten spot, oh, okay. uh, which I often say that won't impress her much. Is my uh, is my is my little dad <laughs> so, joke? Like, that means that means I'm the only one on this call who's not had a uh, top ten album in the UK. Yeah, right. No, I've not had an album. I did two songs. Oh, all right. That means you're the only one on this call who has had a top ten album in exactly. the UK. <laughs> still like, time. Why did you only really do two songs? You never couldn't be asked. Oh, they still album. time. Don't you worry. Don't you worry. Still time. <laughs> um, Jason, I uh, we have a quiz for you. All um, right. If if you're up for it. Yeah. Uh, before uh, we do that, I want to I I want to tell a story about Ralph. Oh, Ooh. is this the story that yeah. literally made it into your fucking no, stand-up room? One of them is, and one of them isn't. <laughs> you got two stories <laughs> about me. Oh, <laughs> shit. Fucking <laughs> hell. Right, as I rub the house no, into what? the mic. Let's go. <laughs> no, because... I should have got another beer. So the first one is it's not really it's, it, it was a it was an aside I used to sort of throw in sometimes about doing the game of football that we played at uh, Old Trafford. I remember it well. For uh, and it was Manchester United versus the rest of the world, right? Yeah. And and a few people have said, I, you know, we'd obviously worked together before. But a few people have said, Ralph's really good. Like he's really good at football, and uh, but he do, he takes it really. He seriously. takes it very seriously. <laughs> really serious. Oh yeah. And I was like, how it's serious can you take? Professionals. It? It's a laugh, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You have no idea. <laughs> it's a laugh, isn't it? Right. So me and Lee Mack are, uh, are uh, we're on the left. Well, Ali. Ali. Yeah. <laughs> We're on the yeah, we're on the well, left, and uh, and well, I say left. Not neither of us are left wing or left back. We're just left, right? One of and we're covering for each other as we can. Cause neither of us are particularly good. And there's you know it's for comic relief. So there's families and there's kids and there's you know there's lots of people, and there's like a front row essentially. And so me and Lee are just pissing about, messing around. At one point, you know, Lee tries to slide tackle uh, Yap Stamp. Uh, you know, which is not advisable. Um, and, uh, you know, the only time I've ever seen anybody slide tackle somebody and then from the floor go, I'm sorry. You know, <laughs> it was like that sort of game. <laughs> and at one point we're messing around, all these kids and that are, are on the side, and the ball goes past us and we don't bother running and whatever. We're, we're halfway through. Now, Ralph is a massive Man United fan, but unfortunately, because there's so many players and so many fans of Manchester United, he wasn't allowed to play for... Manchester United and he had to play for the rest of the world. So you play for the rest, so of, the for the rest yeah. of the world team. Right? Yeah, yeah. And I and there was a point where me and Lee are messing around and Ralph turns around, families, it's comic relief, oh, no. like Lenny Henry's somewhere. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's massive. Ralph turns around and goes, Mac, Manford, get your heads in the fucking game. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. 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 It's all these parents so, putting their hands over their so kids' wrong. ears like... <laughs> Don't listen to that naughty man. <laughs> Pudgy's crying in the corner. Yeah. yeah. Poor Richard oh. Curtis is like, what's going on here? This is not what this is about. Oh, yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah, and, I um, about that. Yeah, and it was oh, great. So you, Ralph. And it, it really was, is. and it is. And the one I've never told, but I always think it's a brilliant moment of how serious someone is taking uh, what is essentially <laughs> a laugh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is, There's no such thing as a friendly. Go on. Is Ralph, right, <laughs> scores an absolute beauty. You probably remember that. It was, it was like I edge, definitely remember it that. It was edge of the box. It was like on his knee and then like half volley top corner like it was an absolute beauty and he scores his cracking goal against Man United at Old Trafford and then I know what you're going to say doesn't celebrate (laughs) 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 you know what when Frank Lampard scored against Chelsea after all of years of playing for him it would have been disrespectful for him to for him to celebrate to his previous club I didn't want to upset the fans (laughs) <laughs> I didn't want to listen to the fans of who there were about 30. Oh, that's that always brilliant. Made me kill oh, that's me. fantastic. Hey, I just, uh, that's fantastic. I just found this on my computer. That's from that day. There's me and there's me tackling. Well, I think it might be Ole Gunnar Solskjaer running past me rather than me tackling him, but there you go. Oh, wow. And that was I've probably, got... I, think, I think that was not long after I just shouted at you and Lee Mack. Yeah, well, I, I've got one <laughs> here. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, it's, it's actually, this is my wife's office, but I'm usually in my office. Uh, and it's actually I've got it printed. It's on it's on the wall. But I I don't know if you remember. But after the penalty, you can't really see you, that. After you the had penalty, a uh, city shirt on, didn't you? I remember. I had my city shirt underneath. Yeah, yeah. Uh, me, and you me, took me, off, I took it off, uh, and you got booed. And I took it off. I not only got booed, I got booked. <laughs> <laughs> That's excellent. Uh, charity that excellent. gig. <laughs> that's that is excellent. That is excellent. Oh god, oh, man! Uh, I've got, I've got. Just before we do the quiz, go I've on. got some questions that I asked the the uh, people who were on Twitter and oh, social yeah, yeah, media. Oh yeah, yeah. Just because I knew oh, yeah. they were coming on, and I just and they're only daft, but a bit of fun. You know really? what I mean? Yeah, and I just thought we'll we'll do a couple. Um, um, they said um, if you could only have one for the rest of your life, yeah, what would it be, Greg's or McDonald's? Oh. That's tough, that. I'm going to go Greg's, I think. Yes. Yeah, I think so. I, I think so. There's more healthy options in Greg's, isn't I could, there? I'd say you say Greg's as well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. the only... The only yeah, I, more... love, I love Greg's, and I love, like, they were, you know, they were stalwarts right through the pandemic. The only thing that I, they need to sort out is someone needs to invent at Greg's uh, a display cabinet that keeps everything warm all day. Because the amount of time... It's the only shop I ever go in, I go... What have you got that's hot? Like, I, ne- I never say what I want because they go, oh, it's cold, that. I go, like, why can't they just have, why have they not invented a thing that yeah. just keeps it yeah, warm? What have you all got that day? I can eat? Yeah, because yeah, yeah. there's like two temperatures yeah. at Greg's. It's either freezing or it burns your face off. Yeah. So I need like a, I need a middle ground. Totally. Totally. Now, this is a, this is a bit, this is a bit different. Um, Snog, marry or shag, Ooh, right? N- Nicola Sturgeon. Right. Anne Hegarty. The governor's from the chase. Yeah. And Annie Wilkes, that's Kathy Bates in misery. Oh, crikey. Snog, Mario, That's Mario, a tough one. Snog, Mario, Shag. Snog, Mario, Shag. Nicola Sturgeon, Anne Hegarty from the chase, or Kathy Bates in misery. Annie Wilkes. Well, I'm going to say, um, well, Kathy Bates, uh, Mis- that's a character, isn't it? So I'll get away with that, just saying. I, I, also, I don't think you'd have much of a choice, would you? She's, she's just nobbled your well, ankle. Yeah, exactly, at least. Yeah. I'll smash your <laughs> so ankles least, in if you don't marry me. So be yeah. shagged. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yes. snug and married. And also, and and probably... also if, if if the marriage to Kat, I said I'd be thinking about marrying Kat Annie Wilkes because because if it's awful, you're not going to last long anyway. So well, that's that. No, I think I'm just going to get it over and done with. I think one big bash, <laughs> yeah. and then also I'm not very good at it. You know, um, even though I've got six kids, so I think she'd probably <laughs> let me go. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be one of them like what do you mean you letting me go you keep everybody I'll be, I'll be furious <laughs> yeah. yeah dead insulted uh, Snog and so Mary I, re- I reckon I'd snog Nicola Sturgeon I quite, I, I quite like Nicola Sturgeon I think she's you know I think she's I'd... neat like so I like her I think that'd be a laugh she'd be a fun night out you're going to marry Anne Hegarty and then marry Anne Hegarty because she's dead clever and so you'd never not have anything to uh, and also Apparently you'd never have that moment where you're like messy. Yeah, and you'd be like, oh, what's that guy called? And then you both like, <laughs> yeah, she was just making yeah. no every time. You know? Yeah, yeah. Give it, she'd tell you who it was and then tell yeah. you the No, I think she came across day. well in the jungle and I think she looks like a laugh. So, yeah, and that's all you want, really. Because I always think, you know, when it comes to relationships anyway, 
it's about a laugh in it because you know yep. uh, sex and all those sort of things that's a couple of minutes a week uh, you know, but having a laugh. Don't, hey, hey, don't show off. I'm showing off. There's sorry, no need to show you know, off. Hey, hey, have hey, a laugh. All right, that's stud. A... All right, stud. <laughs> having a laugh. Well, that was, from Ra- that was from Rachel at Racky uh, M, and the other one was from um, from Kells. Uh, right. I've got uh, one more here Go on, from yeah. Mr. B. What's, what's the biggest animal you could beat in a fight with your bare hands? See, this actually comes up a lot. Between me and my brother, we have this conversation a lot. Um, like one day, once, I, we had it so much that one year I um, I got someone to take a picture of me outside uh, Chester Zoo with some boxing gloves, and I sent it to my brother as like a, as a birthday card because it's a conversation that it's like his go-to drunken conversation. I tell you, um, I never thought that when we asked that question, I did not think the first words out of your mouth were going to be this comes up a lot. Yeah, it does. I don't know why it's my bro- it's my brother's go-to like drunk question. So. Sure. Um, I think we've we've managed to get up to about a cow. I think uh, over the uh, a cow? yeah, I reckon I could probably batter a cow. Uh, <laughs> like if it come to it, I'm scared you know. of cows because um, they're big. Like also, cows, also, if you get them at night, they sleep standing yeah, up, sleepy. don't they? So yeah. um, <laughs> could take a few of them out at once, so, <laughs> like dominoes. <laughs> Cow dominoes. Yeah. Let's do line it. Them, line them up and just push them over. Yeah. <laughs> um, that, that's all the. Co- I've got this. This one person here, Margaret Moffat, uh, has said, "Ask you about the voluntary volunteer driving you've been doing over COVID." Is that true? Uh, yeah, I did volunteer a, I've driving. Done, I've done. I've worked for a little charity here in Stockport called uh, the, the Stockport Car Scheme, and uh, yeah, you just pick the old folks up and take them to uh, their appointments and get vaccinated and all that sort of stuff. So it's been, I've been doing it since March, good. yeah. Nice one, yeah, it's been all right, it's been a lot. <clears throat> People keep saying, oh, that's a nice thing for you to do. And I go, I've got six kids, mate. This ta- this is for me. I do it for yeah. me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a selfish volunteer. I get in that car. I'm like, this is not your time, Doris. Quiet. This is my time. <laughs> so do you, go to my, do you go to my sister's cafe in Romley? Mellas? Oh, yeah, Mellas in Romley, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I pop in for a brew. That's where I'm from. Stop. No, I know. I'm I know. from Stockport. I'm, I'm popping for brew. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's oh, it. Uh, hey, Jace, well, uh, well, we... while, we're do, while we're doing questions, I got uh, uh, I got asked. This, oh, go I mean, this doesn't particularly. Um, uh, sorry, Jason. This, but oh. I, I have a bugbear about this. This doesn't involve you, but I need to know the, oh, right. the answer to this because I'm fuming. Hmm. Um, Ryan Par- at Ryan Parkinson twenty two. Will wants to know, Ralph, why doesn't Will Meller follow you on Instagram? It's a very fucking good point. Does he know? Why doesn't Will Do Meller follow me on Instagram? I, I didn't know. I, I, didn't, know I didn't. I don't think he follows. Actually, I, I noticed that the other day when you tweeted about the thing. I don't think he follows me on on the old Twitter either. Oh, Will. Who does he think he is? Mortifying. I know. What a bell end. No, do you know what? Do you know what? Let me just have a look. I think it's probably because <laughs> look you take at, pictures oh, of yourself on TV. I'm you take s- pictures of yourself on the TV Times front cover and post it. That's probably why. <laughs> you sad bastard. Correct. You've took a I mean, picture of the TV Times. What's wrong with you? Listen. The next time you're on the TV Times, you're welcome to as well. <laughs> I'll take pictures of myself and post them and say, there's, there's me on TV Times. There's I'm been that. plenty of pictures I'm of that. you on Broadchurch and all that shit. This is the first time I've no. ever made it, all right? Give me a break. Hey, I've actually got a bonus <laughs> bit with you, Ralph, actually, while we're talking about uh, Death oh, in shit, Paradise. Man. I was listening oh, yeah. to your interview on uh, Virgin yeah. when you said that I had a miraculous tan that came out of nowhere. Did I? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you made it sound well, like I'd been to some sort of tanning salon. Before I came out, <laughs> before I came oh, yeah. out to Guadalupe, oh, yeah, I did. I remember now that that was the implication I was trying to get. Unbelievable! Yeah. Well, Unbelievable. funny, I, and this comes full circle. This thing, because you know how you're insulted because you're like, as if, as if I, Jason Manford, would ever be seen dead going to a talent salon. I'm a, I'm a, like, I'm a, I'm a sound northern lad, right? Yeah, I agree with you. Do you, can you name anyone who you think might have frequented talents, uh, 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 tanning salons sort of circa 2004-05? Oh, I mean, all day long, um, Mella. Yeah, all cool. day long, Mella. Mella. Hey, that was character. It was Gaz. It was for Gaz. It wasn't for me. I was thinking of the character. <laughs> 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 he used to go oh, for get God. facials and tanning. Yeah, but then he was having what, photos what, in front of the heat magazine with his six pack out. Like that's you know what I mean. So yeah, that's not. That's then true, you've got yeah. you've got to add just that got extra. To... You know you've got to go to that extra mile. I respect <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah. Hey, well, wait, what's wrong yeah. with a bit of body right. shading? What's wrong with a bit hey, of body not shading? <laughs> not at all. <laughs> right, I'm going to give you a quiz. Yeah, go on. All right. So right, this is a new. It's our new quiz. Yeah. Right. One. No, you, 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 what, what, this is this is our new thing that we want to do with our guests. This is the, this is the inaugural two pints pub mini pub quiz. Okay, all right. And your specialist subject, we we assume, is um, famous Jasons. 
Right, okay. Okay, so yeah. <clears throat> yeah. question one. Yeah. Wait, easy. let me set the timer. Oh. I've got oh, set the timer. Is it, is it, is it, oh, oh, it's oh, timed, I don't even know the rules. How long have I got? Time? You've got... You've got one minute, as many questions as you can, and there will be a oh. winner at the end of this season. To, so to, so oh, this is important. About that. Uh, of all okay, the celebs. Don't want it. And, no, I love it. Um, some, and you, some of these questions are not exactly quick fire, but we'll, we'll, we'll give it a it's go. Gonna okay, start off, it's going to start off easy and get harder, but you'll know right. when your time's up when you hear this sound. Yeah. Nice. It's, brilliant. It's a, it's brilliant. a fart gun. I, I found it in my kids. I found it in my It's what a million's fart gun I found. Brilliant. And you wonder why your daughter's not asking you for help with her homeschooling. If <laughs> <laughs> you sat in the lounge with a fart gun. I'm just, going to, I'm just going to work, sweetheart. <laughs> yeah. I love it going, I got it for me kids, bollocks. They've ne- neither of them yeah. have ever bothered no. with you. You Jay- wonder Jay- why Jay- people feel we've not got a proper job, Will. Because <laughs> you've got a fart gun. You wonder why we're not on the key worker list. The <laughs> fart gun man here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we're not getting a vaccine anytime soon because of Will and his fucking fart gun. <laughs> right, go it. on then. I love it. All right, All right. go on. All right, your minute Will, starts. Tell, tell me when the timer starts. Yes, you'll know when you hear that sound when the minute's over, but your minute starts now. Go. Okay, which which Jason was part of Take That? Orange. Uh, he played for Wimbledon, Charlton, uh, Borough, Southampton and Blackpool. What's this famous Jamaican Jason surname? Oh, Jason. No, it's gone. Don't know. Okay, we'll move on. Um, uh, another f- uh, food-related one. He was famous for being Kylie's boyfriend in Neighbours. Donovan. Yeah, oh, Donna Van. That's a Donna terrible Van. question. Terrible. Was the food related? Quick, come on, um, quick, quick. Uh, famous Jason from 90, Beverly Hills 90210. Oh, bloody hell. Um, Jason. Oh, not Statham, is it? Yes, no. Right to... No, I don't know. Well, okay. Uh, fa- uh, Jason from a Guy Ritchie film. You just said it. Oh, Statham. There you go. Woo Okay. Uh, musician had hits with Take You Dancing, Savage Love, and Love Not War. I would never. Mraz? No, no, Derulo. Derulo. Uh, 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 this Jason played Aquaman. Oh yeah, Jason. Um, oh, he's like got muscles and that, hasn't he? Um, That'll do. Oh, oh, <laughs> uh, oh, no, it's gone, Jason. I'm sorry, gone. that is the next question you got. The next question is Momo. Momo. Yeah, Momo. Well go, yeah. We'll give you that. The next one was. We'll give you Momo. Jason we'll give you Momo. Sorry, I didn't Which write Jason this question. Which Jason fucked a pie? <laughs> fucked an apple pie? Oh, um, be- no, uh, Bates, Bateman, is it? Jason Bateman? Jason? <laughs> no, but Jason Bateman's going to be gutted with that. Jason. Uh, yeah, Biggs, wasn't it? Biggs, Jason that's Biggs. it, Biggs. <laughs> right, well, I'll give oh, you yeah, that, and you've film, got... Yeah. <laughs> You got four. We'll give you the last more, Jason Moore. So you got four okay. in a minute. It's not, not bad. Great, I think, that. I not think great. Ralph could have read them quicker. I guess it's you, Ralph, because right, you're the brains. I'm disappointed <sighs> in that. I'm usually well pretty good when I, you know, I'm booked and do the odd quiz here and there. I'm, I'm usually pretty good, but that was uh, that one. That was that's taking me back to my tipping point days. <laughs> <laughs> terrible. Yeah. I did absolutely. Yeah. I knocked well, out that's my that, boys. I just want to say. <clears throat> A big thanks to Jason for coming on. Jace, thanks for coming on, my mate. It's been great to see Pleasure, you. Pleasure, Treasure. Right. Yeah, enjoyed it. That's the first. Will, that's the first time you've you've. You're, Jason and I have crossed paths a few times over the years, but this is the first time you've seen him since the two pounds days, right? Not seen it. Do you know? I, I yeah. haven't seen you, Jay. I mean, I don't know how we've not no. passed cross paths, but it's just it's amazing, I mean, isn't it? Because I mean, you bump into everyone at some point. But yeah, yeah. Do you live in? Do you, still, th- do you still live in Stockport? I'm still in Stockport, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's been a couple of things. Well, I'm up there all the I've time. Had a couple of things over the years where they've gone, oh, Will Mellor's in it, and then you've gone to, you know, audition, and then I didn't all get right. it. <laughs> but, um, yeah. but other than that, yeah, we're not really. Well, ironically, I've had a fair few things where they go, oh, Jason Manford's auditioning too, and then I didn't get it either. Yeah, you've and you done did. all right. Me too. I've no sympathy for you fucking six months in the Caribbean. <laughs> yeah, to be fair. Oh, yeah, yeah, what a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, I have to wear a tie in the sunshine. Like, fuck off. <laughs> Hey, you saw. I did. I didn't complain too much about that. I just got on with it. But it, no, it, it is. Didn't. It is a. It is a bit much. I know. It it's a, it's a dos for the guest, though. I've got to say, I had an absolute oh, yeah, it's blast. Great. It's great. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mate, I did. It, I did it. On, everyone's pressuring me on on social media to try and get Will back out again. So yeah. What were you, suggest... What part did well, you play, Will? When you were in it, I was a murderer. I was a. I was a doctor. Oh. Uh, would you believe? Um, and I. Uh, I was. So I was can you? Killing so you're still alive then? So you could. You could go back. I'm in prison. Well, I'm yeah, well, I'm in Nick. I've got 25 I'm genuinely, years. I'm genuinely going to suggest this um, over the next few days. Who knows whether they'll go for it? But I'm going to suggest that um, they've never done a, an episode where a previous murderer has escaped from jail. 
Mm. Think, I'm going to see if I can see if I can persuade him to go go down that route. And, That's uh, a good idea. Hey, and work. how about you murder me? <laughs> yeah, and then, exactly. Because, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because and Craig, your character Craig, still really sad. Yeah, I'm back like, like, re- returns. Yeah, yeah, I've gone back out there because because you're as still mates with Kelvin. Yeah, but co- well, it's funny because as much as um, you know, sorry, spoiler alert, I wasn't the murderer, but uh, or the murderer, you know, wasn't murdered. But one of the things about it is, it's an, like for a guest. I know you guys are putting a shift in, but for the, for guests, it's an absolute dos. I mean, I literally had three days, and I just was on a jet ski for forty minutes, and then I was back Friday. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, and yet still, when I got back to the hotel, and Laura, uh, who was the who was murdered, uh, yeah. when Laura was sat by the pool because she's only in two scenes because she gets murdered early on. I was envious of her, even though yeah. I was also doing fuck all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was your thinking, morning's oh. work had been your morning's work had been on jet ski. And you were still yeah, like, and I was still thinking, look at her doss in here. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking hey, that's the dream. Have you ever noticed? Have you ever, have you ever noticed when you get a job, the first thing you do is see how many days you've got off. Oh, totally. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's that classic. How do you <laughs> get bet- an actor to moan given yeah. the job? <laughs> yeah, you know, exactly. So. exactly. <laughs> it's true. It's so true. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll see. Right, well, cheers, boys. To them, we'll do, the, we'll do the we'll do the three of us somehow find a way to um, to do I another like uh, death in paradise. <laughs> you can both get murdered. You can be murdered by Will, and then everybody's happy. I'm fine with that. I'm <laughs> fine. Um, Jace, thanks, thanks so for much. coming on. Pleasure. Guys. No worries. Good to see you. Yeah, no worries. Best luck with it. Bless you. All right, pal. All right, boys. See, see you soon. Good luck see with you the later. rest of lockdown. Bye, cheers. Nice one. Nice to see right. you, Jace. Take care, pal. Thanks a lot. Oh, how good was that? Yeah, he's great, isn't he? He's such a top lad. Top top lad. Do you remember when he used to um, when he used to do the the warm up and we'd all we'd finish the show and then we'd all uh, go into the green room, a few beers, all our guests and everything. We'd have a great laugh and then it'd be a bit of a party after we'd finish shooting. And Jason would be like, he'd have like one orange juice and then like, see you later. We were always like desperately sort of trying to persuade him to come out and everything, but he was dead diligent. No. Just got on the train to Manchester. Plus he doesn't drink, so there was that. But yeah, oh. great. So good. But to no, see him just great. And, and do you know what? Well. As well. You know what as well is there's loads I didn't know about him and that's what I love about when you get guests on. I don't try. I, I mean, you don't you don't want to do too much research because you don't want to think. Well, I'll look it all up, then you know it all. And people, I think people out there, there's stuff I didn't know about him, yeah. and it's interesting. And he's yeah. genuinely a nice guy. So um, Great really lad, good to have him on. And uh, yeah, <laughs> top lad, and yeah. really fu- naturally funny man. And his stand up is. Yeah. Is what, yeah, I don't, there's a lot of stand-ups that I don't like. I mean, I'm an old school fan. I love Billy Connolly and all that stuff and people who tell stories. But Jason Manford is the warmest, nicest, funny man on stage. He's so funny, he, so he good. Was, he was making us howl when we were out in um, in the Caribbean, mate. It's non-stop. Very, very funny bloke. Um, Just a so nice man. So uh, for thanks today. for coming on, Jason. That's that was great. For yeah, that um, was it. So thank you to Jason Manford and thank you to Manscaped again for, um, for sponsoring uh, this episode. And... Um, and all the ones that yeah. they're sponsoring. Uh, remember, you can get uh, your twenty percent off Manscaped with our code, which is two pints. You can go to manscaped.com and get twenty percent off with the code, which is two pints, all written out in capitals. T W O P I N T S. Um, yes, and that's it. I'll see you in a, in a couple of days, I guess. Um, yes, I just want to say, round the corner, round the corner is Valentine's Day. So this Manscaped thing is not just for it is for men, but it's it's the it's, it's the best kit out there for male grooming. Um, you get boxer shorts, you get a solitary bag and all this sort of stuff but Valentine's Day have a little play around with it give each other a little trim see how you suit it out and send Ralph all your pictures um, yeah, are you going to please do, do like a shape I want to. See, I want you to trim like a shape and I want to see it uh, what's wrong with you sick pervo what's wrong with you man send your pictures to me gentles I don't want to see the actual like Frank and Beans. No. I just want to see like how the how the how, how the grass has been mown. And also, as if I've not seen it way too many times in my liking anyway. It was out and about about once every two days when we were filming. Um, well, you right. Know. Well, thank you to Manscaped for sponsoring us, and um, thanks to Jason Manford. And I will speak to you in a couple of days' time. Yeah, nice one, mate. All the best. Uh, All right. I'll speak, hey, we've got on. a great guest lined up. I'll surprise everyone with it. But we've got an absolute belting guest for the next one as well. So. I'll let you know who uh, it is. I don't even know who that is yet, people. so I'm looking forward to it. And um, that it's beer at half eight in the morning went down a bit better than I thought it would. <laughs> see you later. All right, mate. Nice to see you. Bye. Take care, everyone. Bye. Stay safe and stay positive. Ta-da.